Amen, amen. Yes, you can give a clap, clap offering for that. I mean, uh, we had a great time. Listen, a couple of things that I, I noticed, that they, uh, the one day organization who is, we did this like citywide. So this happened in churches, in over 200 churches, at schools. It happened at parks. It happened at different nonprofit areas around, around the city. And um, they, they sent me an email and asked me uh, some questions about, you know, our experience, had it gone yesterday. And as I was writing it, a couple of things that I noticed is, one, we had people that serve that don't even come to our church, come serve, right? So I was impacted by a, a, a three young ladies that came, uh, and they were serving and passing out water. And they said, hey, we're here to serve. We're from a local, uh, uh, one of those clinics that's like an ER clinic. And so they're like, we, we signed up, and this is like the closest church, or this was the closest center to us, so, so we're here. What, what do you need? And I'm like, I, I actually need some napkins and some, and some buns for the burgers. We, we didn't buy enough. And, and they're like, we can get them for you. I'm like, well, do you mind going to Walmart then and getting them? And then they said, okay, how many napkins do you need? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> Bring a bunch. And then I said, and then she's like, how many buns? I'm like, I don't know. Go ask the people outside. I, I, there was a lot I didn't know, as you could see. But uh, w- as I was, b- you know, backtracking and, and thinking about what happened yesterday, I, I said, you know, there was a good percentage of people that came to serve that don't come to our church, which was great, right? It's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. And, and a lot of them that don't come to our church, the first thing they told me is like, hey, nice to meet you. And then the second thing they told me is like, hey, whenever you do this again, send us an email. We'd like to continue to serve. What other activities do you guys do? And I said, hey, we've done different things here and there. And they're like, well, sign us up. Anything else you're doing, we'd love to participate again. And so I loved it. And then I also noticed, another thing I was noticing is that there are some people that served that also are from our church but hadn't served in a while or it's our first, their first time, you know, kind of serving. And so that was also cool. One of the things that I noticed is that we had a lot of, like, teenagers and young adults. And so that was really cool. One of the families that came and, and was walking by, and I was saying hello, and I was introducing myself. And she said, listen, we, we go to a church. And then she did this. We go to a church. And I'm like, what, what did she meant by that, right? We go to a church. And then, she, and then she's like, well, I say we go, but we don't go. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, you know, we, we grew up Catholic and, and, and we go to the church, but we really don't go. And one of the things that my mom, and, she, and then she turned around, she's like, that's my mom. I'm like, hey, mom. And uh, she's like, one of the things my mom noticed is like, you have a lot of young people here. My son is 15. And the first thing she said is like, why don't you come to this church? You live around the corner and your, your son can connect with all these young people. And so I said, yep. My, I have a 15-year-old, and I have a 17-year-old, and we do have a lot of young people, and we'll connect you to small groups. And, and so I didn't want to bombard people with all the things that we do. The only thing I said is like, hey, just come to church, and we'll connect you, right? We have couples things. We have uh, a basketball group. We have volleyball. We have women's workout. There was a, a lady that was like, I want to come to the women's workout. I'm like, well, come to church, and we'll give you all the details because I don't even know what day they come, right? I think it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7. Melissa, you come to that? Okay, okay. No, but her mom does. Okay. Uh, listen, so we, you know, I, I, I said, hey, let, let's come, we'll connect you. But so it was wonderful to see a lot of young people serving, a lot of people, you know, serving. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Normally we would be talking about something else. I actually had a, a message in mind, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Where we're going to talk about the joy of the Lord is my strength. And, and, you know, one of the things that Nehemiah was saying is, is that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it's not that I just have strength and joy, and it's not just that joy brings me strength. It's that it's in the Lord. Right, And so I'm like, we'll talk about that and have a good time and, and, and talk about the difference between happiness and joy and wh- where you find happiness and where you find joy. And we'll, we'll talk about that uh, at some point. But today I want to talk to you about uh, uh, going a second mile because I just want to kind of piggyback on the fact that we did have a phenomenal day yesterday of serving. And I believe God is calling us for more. Right here, I have a, a booklet that was well, not a booklet, but some name, names that were put in here. Everybody that came and visited, we asked them to fill out their names and phone numbers and emails because we want to follow up and just invite them to church and see if we can pray for them in any way. But uh, they, they put their language of preference, and then we asked them about their family what's your family size? So we can give you toys and we can give you items, which is great because we wanted to give everything out. And so, um, each name here represents uh, 75 families 
of families between three people and six people, right? So that's a lot of people we impacted. And most of them obviously live around the neighborhood. And so that was great to, to, to hear. So what does it take to be a, a, a second mile church? And I want to talk to you about that. If you go to chapter 5 of Matthew and all get right to preaching so my wife doesn't say I take too long in the service. And really, when we first saw this video, I thought it was such a cool video. The second time that I get to see this video, the burgers were just making me hungry. So I'm like, yep, let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just get to lunch. No, no, no. We, God wants to speak to us, and then we'll get to lunch. But uh, what did I say? Chapter 5, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, 38 says, verse 38 says, you have heard... And that it was said, Ev eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Right? You, you, you even see it in the movies, an eye for an eye. Right? And, and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. So turn the other cheek, right? And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloth as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who's asked you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. So a few observations from this word. I really want to just concentrate on, on being an extra mile, being an extra mile church. But three observations that we see in this word is number one, that we should not seek vengeance, right? We should not seek for people to pay evil, right? So, and and that's, a, that's a hard thing to understand because if somebody hurts you, you want them to hurt back. If somebody, you know, mistreats you, you want them mistreated, right? And it's almost in our nature to seek revenge. But here it says, hey, turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. And, and even before we talk about turning the other cheek, one of the things that Jesus was saying, as he, this was just a, a, a little part of his Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount is like a, 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 a revival, you know, a revival series, right? It's just he, he did so much in that Sermon on the Mount that you can just take pieces of it and have service all month, one, every night each month to talk about the different things, like, like turn the other cheek. But one of the things that Jesus said is like, hey, you have heard this. You have been taught this. This is what you know, right? And, and really, if you think about it, we kind of been taught the same thing. Hey, if somebody's bullying you in school and they push you, push them back. If somebody hits you, just hit them back. Right. And, and so I, I, you know, was taught that a little bit. And, and my parents were pastors. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, but but I, I also have, have taught that to my kids. Like, hey, don't let them push you. Right. You push them back. And my wife's like, no, no, you call mommy. I'm like, stop, babe. Stop babying her. Mika, you punch him right in the mouth. Right. And then, and then I go to God's word, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Right? It says, turn, turn the other cheek. It's in our nature to want to retaliate. It's in our nature to want to seek vengeance. And Jesus is like, I know. This is everything you've been taught. This is everything you've heard before. But now I'm, I'm doing a new thing. Now I'm demanding more. Now I'm teaching you more. Now we're going to another level. This is the level you were on. Now that I'm here, we're taking this to another level. And we're taking our lives to another level. It says turn the other cheek. Uh, we also see, and as we see, uh, uh, go an extra mile. And so that means that do more than what is required. What is required of you? One mile. And that, and, and that phrase was because the Romans, at any time, if there were some uh, dignitaries coming, at any time, they could just say, hey, I need you to carry this for me a mile. That was the, the rule, that they could order you around to take their stuff, but it was only one mile. Now, that being said, many people in that time, they only traveled about 18 miles a square, square feet, right? I mean, it, it was 18 miles around where they, where they were born. So they weren't traveling too much, and usually a mile was, was uh, sufficient enough. But they, the Romans could order you to go a mile. And now Jesus is saying, hey, if somebody tells you to go a mile, go another mile. And, and, the, and the third thing that, uh, that I see here is that be good and be generous. If somebody is trying to get your cape, give, give them everything. Give them everything you got. If somebody's asking you to borrow money, go ahead and do it. Don't, don't turn your back towards them. My wife and I have, you know, this kind of policy. 
and that if somebody asks us to borrow money, you know, we always try to give them money. Now, that depends on our financial situation, but we don't let people borrow money. We kind of change our mind about that, and I may have to go back and, 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 and rethink that after reading this message because it says don't turn your back on borrowing money, but sometimes it's hard to let somebody borrow money, but it is easier to just give because if I let you borrow money and you don't pay me back, then we, come, we become frenemies instead of friends, right? And I'm like, hey, but sometimes you don't have enough to let them borrow what they ask. Maybe you don't have $1,000 to let them borrow, but I have $100 that you can have, or I have $300 that you can have, and you don't have to pay me back. And, and, and so the, the Bible says, hey, don't turn your back on people that want to borrow money or, or that are asking you for things. Be, be good and be generous. And today, I want to just focus on that, on that phrase. If somebody asks you to go a mile, go another mile. I believe God is calling us to be an extra mile church. An extra mile church. And not just an extra mile church. I believe we need to be extra mile people. I need, I need to be an extra mile employee. I need to be an extra mile manager, an extra mile business owner, an extra, man, an extra mile husband. Right? What, what, is, what is a regular mile husband? The regular mile husband is you remember your anniversary date. You should know that, guys. And, and if you don't know that, that's how you get in trouble, right? So, so we need to know when our anniversary is, right? We had a game during the couple's uh, dinner that we had not too long ago where we had to mention everybody's birthdays in your family, like all the kids and then, and then your wife or your, your husband. And so the wife was doing all the dates and the husband was doing all the dates and the wife came and they actually had a blended family. So had her kids and his kids and their kids. And it was like eight date of births and she had them all. And, and he couldn't even remember his own date of birth. You know, I'm like, that guy is in the doghouse tonight, right? Listen, it's important. It, it, it's, it's like the minimum requirement that you remember anniversary dates, that you say happy anniversary, that maybe you get some chocolates and some flowers. That's like the minimum requirement, right? What, what's the minimum requirement at work? That you put in your 40 hours, that you get stuff done. If, if you were given an assignment, that you finish it. I was reading a book that talks about how, how people are managing uh, virtual employees, people that are now working from home. So instead of like focusing on the hours, now you focus on task. So instead of like checking in that people logged in at 8 in the morning and logged out at 5 p.m., now you check in like, hey, here are the things that need to get done this week. And you check them off that they got done that week, you know. And, and so you want to do them at midnight or you want to do it at 8 in the morning or at 3 o'clock or whatever, just get them done, right? And, and, but I don't know how your place of work is, but if it's task or if it's hours, but that is a minimum requirement for you to do the things that you're told to do. And, and a, an extra mile person, if you're taking notes, is a, if, is, is a, mile, a person that goes that other second mile where there is no traffic, in the second mile, there is no traffic. Many of us want to get recognized either at home or at work or anywhere, but we are living in the one-mile place. Well, it's no wonder you don't get a raise because, you know, there's 20 people that are in the one-mile place with you. You want to get recognized, you've got to be in that second-mile set of people. You got to be doing above and beyond. You see, there's a lot of traffic in that first mile because we all, most of us at least, do what is required. If you don't do what is required, eventually you will be divorced, right? If you don't do what is required, eventually you will get fired. If you don't do what, what is required, eventually you're going to be called to attention. Hey, it is required for your kids to come to school so many days, uh, you know, so many days a uh, school year. If you didn't show up, you get to repeat that grade again. If you don't do the minimum homework and the minimum to pass your grades, guess what? You didn't do what was required. You got to repeat that again. So you don't get recognized in the one mile place. You get recognized in the second mile place. And that is where there's less traffic. And, and listen, one of the things that I, I want you to know is that in that second mile, there's less traffic because there's less foot traffic. A lot of less, peop less people are doing the second mile. However, there's a lot of chatter. 
There's a lot of criticism in the second mile. There's a lot of eyes in the second mile. Oh, look at him. He thinks he's, he, he, look, he's, he thinks he's a teacher's pet. Look at him. Nobody told him to do that. Look. Right? Oh, look at her. Mm. Trying to, hey, you're going to force him to have us do more. Do the minimum so that we can all cruise. When you do more, we can't all just cruise, right? Then, we're, then everybody's expected to do more. We were called in the office uh, to go like once a month into the office. And some of the, some of the guys was like, hey, we shouldn't go into the office because then they're going to want all of us to go to the office. And then I'm, I'm like, well, all of us can't go to the office because some of you guys don't even live in Texas, right? But the ones that are here, I think the minimum we could do is go to the office once a month. That can't hurt too bad. But listen, I, I, there's a lot less foot traffic, but a lot more mouth traffic, chatter. Don't let criticism keep you from going the second mile. Don't let having eyes on you keep, keep you from going the second mile. I believe we're called to be a second mile church and we're called to be second mile people. Are you willing to go, as, a, as, as Star Trek would say, where no man has gone before, which is that second mile? Are you willing to, to go and do that, take that extra step? The second thing I want you to know is that in, in, the, in the, the second mile, people it, it tend to impact more and tend, tend to surprise because they do the unexpected. It is expected for you to be ordered around to go one mile. The extra, that wasn't expected. When you do the unexpected, you're doing something that impacts. Well, why is he walking another mile? Well, why is he, why is he doing that? Why is he offering to come in early? Why is he offering to stay late? Why, why, you, I don't know about you husbands, but if, if you ever just get a gift or bring home flowers for no reason... Well, what do you want? What did you do? What did you do? Nothing. I just, I was, I was at H-E-B. I saw these beautiful flowers. I'm like, I'm going to get you some flowers, baby. You did something. I know. I'm going to find out today. Right? Hey, hey listen, it's, you, you're doing the unexpected. It's, it's impactful. It's, it's surprising. It's, a, it's amazing. But, but listen, it is in this area, it is in this area where you recognize and, and, and things begin to, businesses begin to differentiate from, enough, from one another. People begin to differentiate. Em, employees begin to differentiate. If I ask you, hey, what is a one business that does an extra mile? You may come up with one. You may know one that just, you know, has killer service. You may know of a place that just, it's, it's phenomenal, the, the way they treat their staff or, or their employees. I was mentioning that Chick-fil-A is one of those businesses for me. I mean, the line could look long, but they're still fast. And no matter how fast, and even if they're attending in the sun or in the shade, at, at the end, I know I'm going to get the, the right food that I ordered, and I'm going to get a, it's my pleasure. I'm like, thank you, it's my pleasure. I go to other restaurants, and I say, and I say thank you, and they just close the, the window door. And sometimes I'm like, can I get some ketchup? Right, ketchup. If you don't ask for ketchup nowadays, they don't put it in the bag. I know. I, you're preaching, I'm preaching to the choir, apparently. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, you go to some restaurants where the fries are cold. Where the, uh, there, there's a couple places. There's, if, if you ever want to go to Sonic and you're in Pearland, don't. Listen, the lettuce and the tomatoes are awful. And the last, the last we, we ate at one, then we ate at the one that was in Manville. We're like, if we just go to the next town over, and then we ate the one that was in the corner. Like, no, we, let's go to the rich side. Let's go to the, uh, the uppity people. Let's go to the, like, the 288 side. That one gave me that. Listen, everything is really bad. It, and so we decided, hey, we have so many options. They don't care about their level of food service. I'm going to take my 750, and I'm going to find another place where I can get tater tots. Or another place where I can get a foot long. Or another place where I can just get a burger with cheese and, you know, lettuce and tomato. Like Chick-fil-A. The deluxe. Spicy. With a Arnold Palmer, you know, Sun Joy. Because they don't call it Arnold Palmer. It's Sun Joy there. Right? 
Anyway, now I'm getting hungry, guys. We're, we're okay, so you'll know what business, I don't know what, you know, you know the people that go the extra mile. You know the businesses that do a little bit more. I got to stay at a Ritz-Carlton in Naples one time for work, and we got to play uh, a golf over there. It's a golf course called Tiburon. And so uh, uh, for those of you that don't understand Spanish, it's called Shark, right? But listen, it was a really nice place. I normally can't afford this, but work can afford it for me. So when I, go, when I went there, I mean, I'm just pulling them with, with my bag, and the guy comes and gets my bag, and I'm like, hey, man, I got this. It has, it has wheels. <laughs> and he's like, no, I got it, Mr. Perez. And I'm like, how do you know my name? Like, that's a rental car. It's not even, it, yeah, it, they knew my name. And then I get to the front desk, and they're like, Mr. Perez, we're waiting for you here. here. We already have the keys. Can I just verify your credit card and ID? And I'm like, Yes. And they just, everybody, and then I had a little incident. I didn't even know that somebody had taken note of it. Something happened in the elevator. I think somebody had dropped something, and I went in, and they were trying to clean up, and I was just like, mm, you know. But I, it was like one, I was going down two floors, and no big deal. But when I was checking out, there was a note with my checkout in an envelope. I opened it up and said, hey, Mr. Price, sorry for the hassle that you experienced in the elevator. Um, we are giving you 50,000 points to make it up for you. And I, I was like, the Ritz Carlton, look at you, right? I'm, I'm like, this will buy me like two nights at a nice place with my wife somewhere, you know? But listen, it's, it's the things like that you, that you take notice and you're like, these guys stepped it up in level. This is not the Holiday Inn anymore. This is not the Motel 8 anymore, right? When I showed up, the TV, first of all, the AC was on. I hate going in my room and the AC's off, it's so hot. Right, but the AC was already on when I went to my room, and then the TV, it's a really nice TV, and it said, Welcome, Mr. Perez. And I was like, Listen, I'm here to do business and play some golf. Right? I mean, it made me feel special. I'm like, I don't know if it's the right Mr. Perez, but I'm starting to believe it now, you know? And and so you may experience second mile businesses, second mile people, and can we be the second mile husbands? Can we be the second mile wives? Can we be the second mile, you know, children of God, young people? Can we be the second mile teachers for our, you know, ministries? Can we be a second mile church? Because it's in that second mile that not only do you surprise and impact, but that's where you can develop your creativity. You see, there's a rule book for the first mile. It means get to work on time. It means have fresh lettuce and tomato in the burger. That's a one mile, right? It, it, the, the, the extra mile is making sure that the order is perfect every time. It's having a smile. It's saying it's my pleasure. It's just there's, you know, second mile when you see it. And there is no rule book for that. There's only a rule book for the first mile. And if we're going to be a second mile, then we need to be able to Use the creativity that God already had puts, has put in you and has put in me to be able to make that into fruition. Because I don't know what a second mile church looks like, but we're going to find out together. I think I have an idea. I think I have some things that, that we could do to be a second mile church. We, we are doing some of them. And we're going to do more, but it's going to take your creativity and my creativity, and it's going to take our action to actually do it and not just dream it and not just say it. And I believe yesterday we were a second mile church. We were taking things all the way to the, to the cars. We were making sure they were taken care of. We, were, we didn't let them, let, let them lift any of the waters. If there was anything heavy, we were walking through it. From one room, we took it to the door of the next room. And hopefully, everybody had a smile and everybody was just having a, a good time. And, you know, when we were praying for people, it was amazing to see that we were, like, surrounding people during prayer. Uh, somebody was sharing t to me that, you know, one, one of our ladies there in prayer was sharing with somebody else and how God was just doing his thing and, 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 you know, speaking words of wisdom when that was happening. And I'm like, wow, it's beautiful to see. But what you don't see is some of the extra mile stuff. It's like the fact that there was eight of us men that went to the dump, dumpster. We went to two because the first one was closed. And you didn't see that we didn't all have gloves. And you didn't see and you didn't smell how bad the dumpster smelled. I mean, because there's all kinds, it's a dumpster, 
you know, it's all kinds of stuff there. So we had to endure, first of all, the potholes going into the dumpster area. And then we had to dump everything out. And it was smelly and it was bad. And then I forgot I had gone to the dumpster, came back and grabbed a burger and forgot to wash my hands. But I prayed for my food, so it's all good. Listen, it's those things you don't see, but it's a second mile. You see, many of us believe that if we don't see it, it didn't happen. There was a, there was a craftsman who was making a chair, and he was like a mechanical engineer too, but he was making a chair, and then he would do all this detail, and he would do the detail underneath, and he would make sure that the screws were perfect, and then something was off, and at the bottom of the chair, he was taking his time, and then his son came to him and said, Dad, why are you doing that? People are going to sit on top of the chair. They're not going to sit below it, and nobody's going to see it, and the dad said, Son, but I see it, and because I see it, I, need to, I want it done right, and I want it done nice, and I want it done good. And you know who that person was? That was Steve Jobs' dad. So Steve Jobs talk, talks about it in an interview, and he, he talks about how his dad impacted him in the quality, in the design, in the doing the best, in, even in the things that nobody can see. And so you see some of the work that Steve Jobs did and some of the impact that he's done. Apparently, it's because of Steve Jobs that we have all the kinds of different fonts that you can get. It was because he said, I wonder if we could do this. Why? Because I think we could do even better. Why do we just have to have that same type of, of, uh, of, of script? Let's do... Let's do sans and let's do cursive and let's do Times New Roman and let's do, you know, I don't know, what, what is it? Ariel and let's do Ariel bold and, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad they did that because I would bold everything and I'd get like the biggest font so that it could fill the page whenever I was turning paper in and I couldn't write 500 words. I wanted to look like it was 500 words. I wanted my 300 words to like be bigger, right? And, and, and so, and you know, the teacher was like, make sure it's, it's, make sure it's single space. I'm like, I wonder if she noticed that mine's single and a half. I was savvy with the computer, you know. Follow me for more. No, I'm kidding. It, it, it's, listen, it, it's just, it was, it was the things that you wouldn't think of, the things that didn't know, the things that were inside the boards and the different things, you know. And, and so that is, that, that is what a second mile person looks like. And God is calling us to, to be that, to use your creativity, to, to go beyond what the manual says. And the last thing I want to tell you, and, and we'll just leave it here, is, we need, to, we need to stop thinking that we're going to be told what the second mile is. Many people say, well, I would do the extra work if I knew that that's what you wanted. Oh, I would, I would get you a cake if I knew that's what you wanted. I would buy you that anniversary gift if I knew you wanted earrings. And many of us, that's our excuse for not going the extra mile. Well, if you just tell me I'm not a mind reader, ladies, at least leave hints or something, you know, help us out a little bit. But, but many times, that's our excuse for not being a second mile husband or a second mile employee or a second mile fill in the blank. Well, nobody told me. Well, because there's no manual, eh, nobody's gonna tell you what the second mile is. Do I know what the second mile is for our next, the next three months? Not right now. I don't know. But you know what? We're going to find out together. And it may be that when somebody walks to those, those doors, immediately you stop and say, hey, uh, can I give you a hug? Hey, you look sad. Can I pray for you? Maybe, maybe that we notice that somebody lost their job and we show up with a bunch of groceries or we show up and mow their lawn or we show up and tell them, hey, how, how can we help you? Hey, can we help you pay your bill? I, I, I don't know. But they're not going to come and tell us, hey, I, I lost my job. I need help with a bill or I need help with groceries. But we need, to, we need to go beyond that. We need to figure it out as we go, as we become a better church that, that serves better, that goes the extra mile, as we become better people, better Christians, better disciples. Because a manual that was already written and we already know and Jesus said, hey, I know you have heard and I know you have been taught, but now we're going to another level. And I believe that if there's something that we can take away from yesterday is that we're going to another level. And why do we need to do that? Can we just do church 
we normally do? Can we just serve like we've normally done? And let me tell you, no. What we're doing has been okay and it has worked at times, but we need to do better. One of the things that happened yesterday that broke my heart, it completely broke my heart, is as I was talking to two people, they said, hey, we've we lived here for a long time. They said eight years, but they said that this was clear and this, this church wasn't here. So I'm deducing that that means that we're, they've been living here for more than 15 years because we've been here 15 years. And they said, hey, I, so I've driven by here and I, was, I remember there were no apartments or houses or the church. And, you know, and, and I've, I've seen your church. It's like it's the first time we actually come in to the parking lot. It's the first time we actually talk to, to people. And it broke my heart because I started thinking, oh, my God, in 15 years, we've done some stuff. You may not have been here, but we went out to the community. We had a, a time that we called it the challenge, el reto. And we went and we mowed people's lawns. And we went and we prayed with people. And we went and we handed water. And we did and did a lot of stuff. And then I started thinking, man, were we the one-mile church that, you know, we, did, we set on a plan, but then it got to 11. And we said, hey, now we got to go back because it's 11. And maybe they were the next house. Or are we the, the one-mile church where, you know, we just gave a, a, the, the very minimum that we could give so then we didn't have enough groceries to, like, give one more or three more? Can, can we do more? I believe we can do more, and I know we can do more. And why do we need to do more? Because, listen, the world is living in some tough, very, very tough times. I talk to people that are telling me, hey, what do you think is going to happen with the dollar? Hey, what do you think is happening with recession? Hey, did you see that Biden changed the rules and we're in a deeper recession than it looks like? Why are a lot of people getting laid off? Hey, are we going to go into, I don't know. Hey, the, the housing market. Hey, the bitcoins. And hey, I, I don't know what's going. Hey, what about China? And what about Ukraine? And what about Russia? And what about, you know, this whole thing where now men can wrestle against women and now Men can compete in women's sports because they say they're women. And what about this transgender? And what about, there's so many things. And, and I'm like, you know what? We need Jesus now more than ever. There are some very, very dark times right now where we are elevating the wrong things. Just last night, I was sitting in, and oddly enough, I was sitting in a, a bridal shower last night. And then out of the blue, I'm, I'm eating Coditos, whatever they, they had. And then out of the blue, somebody said, hey, did you hear the news of what happened in Florida? Like, through so I'm like, what happened? And well, you know, the dad wanted to treat the son, and he's like, hey, I'm going to send you an Uber Eats. But then when the, when the Uber Eats guy got there, they grabbed him and took him in, and they ate the guy. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, they killed the guy and ate parts of him and cut him up. And, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, as I'm eating, right? And, and, then, he, and then he, and I said, that's like some demonic stuff. And then he said, you know what? That's exactly what the cops said in the report, that it was some demonic stuff that's happening. And I'm like, that guy had to have been so drugged up or filled with such evil. That happened in Florida. Any of us could have been the Uber Eats driver. We are living in some dark times, and dark times require light, and the light is found in us because Jesus is in us, because the Word of God is in us, and in these dark places that you're walking, you need to walk with the light, and in these places that you're walking, you need to be the salt, and that's why it is important that we go the extra mile because we can't stop one house short because we can't stop three resources short because we can't just be conformed with the way we've been doing church so whenever you hear we're going to do something crazy we're going to do something new whenever you hear we're going to need your time or we're going to need your talents or we're going to need you to give more and whenever we talk about everything that we're doing just know that we're doing all of this because we are a second mile church and we can't be conformed to the one mile church stuff that we've been doing. What does that look like? We'll find out together. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do it together. Some ideas you're gonna give. How can we reach more people? How can we pray for more people? How can we give for more people? How can we just be out there with more people? I don't know. But we need them to come to Christ and not to necessarily to our church, but to know that there's salvation in Christ.
that there's transformation, that there's a better way, that maybe they've been looking for peace in alcohol and drugs and it's only found in Christ. And maybe they've been living, looking for joy in the things that bring them happiness. But true joy is only found in Christ. Maybe they've been looking everywhere and it's time to give Jesus a try. And that requires us to go a second mile. And that requires you to go a second mile because you are the light. It needs to be noticed where you work. It needs to be noticed in your family. It needs to be noticed in your neighborhood. It needs to be noticed in the supermarket. It needs to be noticed wherever you're going. And so today we're going to pray, Lord, help us be that extra mile church and help us be that extra mile people. Let's go where no church in South Houston has gone before. And let's do the things that we haven't done before. Not just to to, to be in the billboards because that's not our intent. We want to do it so that your name can be lifted high and so that people can be transformed in Christ. I want to pray for you. And I want God to convict what it is that maybe you need to do or we need to do. And I want the creativity to start flowing. And I want us just to, you know, gather together and team up and say, hey, what worked, what didn't, and what can we do more? Can we have all this music outside one day? I, you know, I, I was walking in with a paleta cart, and it was a big hit. I'm like, I wonder what would have happened if I would have walked with that in the neighborhood. Right? Imagine if we walk by free paletas and here's a, you know, here, here's a, a, a Bible track. We'll invite you to our church. Or can we pray for you and give you a free? Yeah, whatever, right? We can do more, can't we? I think we can. I want you to stand to your feet and I want to pray for you. And I want to give you this opportunity to say maybe you haven't been that second mile person. And, and maybe we haven't been that second mile church. But it's never too late to start. And today is a good day to start. Amen. And if you want to, you may, thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, and, 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 and you may be thinking, what, what else can I do? Or, or, or how will I do this? And I want to just take you to, to the, last, the last part that I, didn't, that I didn't read. I'm going to read it to you while you're there. And, and we're going to do this with love. In the same place that we read, the next, the next verse, verse 43 says, you have heard that it was said. That this, is what, this is what you were taught, and this is what, what it was said. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. It says, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on evil and good. Good people and, and evil people. He says, and he sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous. And if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors, which were the worst of the worst, are not even the tax collectors doing this? And if you greet only, the, only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do you not even, do not even pagans do this? Be perfected, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Listen, it's easy to love somebody who loves you back. It's easy to have somebody's back that has your back. But the haters, it's hard to love the haters. It, it, it's, it's hard to love the ones that are, that are looking at you funny, that are laughing at you, that are talking about you behind your back. It is hard to love the ones that are getting on your last nerve. But God is saying, hey, this is what love requires. And you know what? Because love is in us. We got to go out because if we only focus on all the people that come into this building, that's the easy part. That's the easiest part. Let's just do church with everybody that's in here. God's like, hey, anybody can do that. I'm calling you for more. Let's go out there and love the ones that don't love us, the ones that don't believe that, like us, the ones that don't act like us, the ones that, that think different than us, that, that look different than us, the ones that even hate us. And that's what we're called to do. So I want to pray for you. And I want to, and, and my prayer is, Lord, make us second mile Christian, second mile employees, second mile husbands, spouses, second mile uh, children, whatever it is, second mile businesses, whatever it is. 
I want you to close your eyes right there. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to you and learn from your word. Lord, that, learn that you are calling us for more and sometimes we just need to unlearn the way we've done church, unlearn the way we've been taught or the way we grew up, to learn your truth, to learn your word and you're calling us to love those enemies and you are calling us to impact in a way that uses our creativity by not just doing the minimum by not just doing what is required but doing above that lord so today I, my prayer is that we can go the extra mile in forgiveness that we can go the extra mile in service that we can go the extra mile in being good and doing good things and giving lord and that we can just be an extra mile people extra mile Christians, extra mile disciples, and an extra mile church. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in this church and what you will continue to do through us. In Jesus' name, amen.